for the warehouse. Uh, certainly the share price was in fair for, free fall yesterday. That's what business uh, analysts and consumers are weighing up after the Court of Appeal rejected rival bids by grocery giants, progressive and foodstuffs to buy the red sheds. Now the Commerce Commission says the decision will be good for Kiwi consumers, but is that really the case? For his view, we're joined by retail analyst Tim Morris from Coriolis Research. Tim, thanks for free falling down to uh, to the studio here to meet us. Now the Commerce Commission has said this is a victory for supermarket consumers and for competition in the markets. Why? I think it gives people another opportunity for choice. If people go to the supermarket two to three times a week. If you add that up, that's you know 120 times a year. Um, maybe it's just another place to go instead of going to the same old, same old. You've got another choice. Mm. Okay. What will this this decision uh, won't mean any immediate uh, competition or relief for shoppers, will it? No, not at all. The warehouse has got only three stores open, and we've still got the chance of another another whole round of, of legal challenges ahead of us. So there's no immediate change. What could it mean, though, if um, if the warehouse is able to move uh, into hypermarkets? Um, what it could mean is lower prices, if, if done right, and, and, and that's the whole question. If the warehouse can execute on this thing, certainly it's, it's something that's been tried in over 100 countries around the world, um, and when it's done right, it delivers on lower prices to consumers. Just, and, and, but even if it, if it doesn't deliver on that, it just offers the, the opportunity for choice, you know, one more, one more place to go shopping, um, a, a different kind of offer, a different range. Um, Okay. Now, I use the, the, the expression hypermarkets, which is like a super-duper supermarket. Can you explain a bit what those are? Sure. The, the concept of hypermarket was actually developed in France in 1962 by a company called Carrefour, and, and they've spread throughout the world. It's a pretty obvious concept, really, when you think about it. It's just taking the idea of the one-stop shop a little bit further. So it used to be a, a green grocer and a butcher and a baker and, and the grocery store. Now they've all come under one roof. It's just extending that roof a bit more and capturing a, a department store, I guess, a discount department store. Okay. I'm curious as to how the hypermarket actually makes you know, your milk, your bread, your eggs cheaper. I think it's probably through sharing fixed costs. You only have to have one set of checkouts. You only have to have one set of management over top of it. Um, it's also, um, you know, if you think about it, the warehouse has got a lot of sites already. They've got a lot of things they need to do to open a supermarket. They've got, you know, shopping carts. They've got sites. They've got management. They've got checkouts. All they're really doing is just tacking on the side of it a, a bit of, a bit of food. Okay, a bit of food. What kind of discounts uh, could be could be expected? Um, I probably wouldn't look at it in terms of there's going to be any great savings anytime okay. soon. The challenge they've got is they've only got three stores, right. and, and on the other side they're up against competitors who've got sort of you know hundreds of stores. So. Right, right. Now the, the three stores that they have at the moment, not really. Do, I mean, some are doing well, some aren't. Tell us about that. Uh, I think the one that struggled the most for them is the one at Sylvia Park. That's the first one they opened. Um, the other two they've got, they've got one in Hamilton and one in Fongaray. Both of those seem to be doing reasonably well. The difference between the two is that the, the, one in Hamil the ones in Hamilton and Fongaray, um, the store's just sitting there, you go in the front door. Whereas the one at Sylvia Park, you've got to walk, you've got to traipse through a mall and, and before you get to the front door, you've walked past a pack and save and a food town. So tough competition. Okay. Really, and, and really the, tough. And across the street, there's a, there's a countdown. So it's a pretty tough site there, I think. Okay, okay. Now, I'm, I'm curious as to, Progressive and uh, foodstuffs, they said the margins are too small, it's not fair, there shouldn't be competition. Valid argument or not? Um, I, probably, for the, probably for the market to decide, and I guess that's what the Commerce Commission has said. I, you know, the, the flip side of it is, is if you look at what supermarkets are doing, they're getting into the warehouse's realm. Every time I go into the supermarket now, I'm knocking over a stack of toasters or, or you know, electric blankets or something. So they're, they're, they're both moving into each other's space, and I think that's a global trend. It's, a, it's interesting because that you raise that, because in these hypermarkets, mm -hmm. Sometimes, I mean, I, I think I've been to one. I can't find a damn thing. They have Walmart in America. It's like, uh, where are the eggs? Where are the... I mean, it's not entirely convenient, I guess, is what I'm saying. It's certainly not. You know, look, if it's Thursday afternoon and you're on your way home from work, um, do you think what I want to do is, is crack on and get into a sort of, you know, 10,000 square meter store and, and traipse around it? No, you don't. But on the other hand, maybe on the weekend when you've got to run a few errands, mm. um, you know, you're going to get that toy for the kid and, yeah. and a new CD it's and the, your grocery shopping. It's so the it's perfect a, place. Mm. Okay, great stuff. Thanks so much, Tim Morris. Now, do you think the Court of Appeal got it right and will consumers be better off? We'd love to.